Hello everyone and welcome back to Agent Agash, which is a channel dedicated to Age of Sigma. This is going to be the second lore video for the Night Haunts, and in this one we're going to be talking about the Restless Dead and what it truly means to be part of the undeath in Age of Sigma. So the Restless Dead. There are many different types of undead, and there is much speculation amongst those learned in the arcane arts about such entities and their maker. As necromancy is a dark and often forbidden subject, a few mortals know the true extent of its rituals, and it is often fatal to learn too much. Across the mortal realms, the dead do not rest easy. Unquiet spirits haunt and terrorise the living. Reanimated corpses rise from their graves at the bidding of necromancers, and immortal soul-blight vampires plot nervously schemes of conquest while draining mortal blood for sustenance. A dread figure casts a long shadow over all. Nagash, father of necromancy, god of the underworlds, and ruler supreme of all undead. Then, with undeath itself, those that dare to study the forbidden art of death magic, curious wizards, wayward apprentices, and would-be necromancers generally accept that there are three main ways to create undead. The first, the most common of these, is the enslavement of the deceased remains. The necro evocus, zombies and skeletons, worn, eaten corpses and desiccated bones can be reanimated through necromantic incantations. There is no life or personality in such risen creatures, merely dark magic that binds their bodies to a will greater than their own. The second way in which undead are created is a necro procratus, undead making more undead. The simplest version of this is the bite of a zombie, which can infect the bitten so that upon their death they too rise up. There are several variations of necro procratus, some involving organized ritual. The third method of creating undead is the most complex, the necro Moldodicus. This takes the form of a powerful eldritch horse cast upon a soul that has been recently separated from its physical body. These hexes can vary by region and culture throughout the mortal realms, but in all cases they consign a terrible fate upon the spirit. Instead of passing onwards into the underworlds, the afflicted spirit will instead remain on the mortal plane, doomed to to haunt it for eternity. The scholars of the College Gate Arcane widely believe that all necromantic magic organised from Nagash and the mortific spells he devised. However, there are instances of natural anomalies such as drifting pockets of amethyst magic or particularly rich veins of grave sand leading to the creation of night haunts as well. Souls become so twisted by death magic that they take anomalous new forms, becoming ghostly killers intent on destroying the living. There are many variations of night haunts, with hundreds of different maledictions in creating distinct phantasmal beings, some of which are believed to be unique in nature. A great majority of night haunts, however, fall into one of about a dozen broad categories. Pacific types of wraiths such as the spiritual imprisoned chain rasp wards, the cursed healers known as Dreadscythe Hardrians, or the mass grave amalgamations known as spirit hosts. There is twisted and dramatic irony to the fates of those souls cursed to become night haunts. One who lost their family in their own life to base betrayal might be cursed to an afterlife where they unfortunately served the killer that took everything from them. A criminal bound in chains that came too long for his life to end so that he might know freedom may find his spirit self still weighed down with stocks and manacles forevermore. It is Nagash that is behind these cruelties. He is unforgiven to a degree mortal kind cannot fathom. However, he does not deal out punishments out of the boredom of eternity, nor does he play with souls for his own amusement, for such concepts are below the great necromancer. 
to Nagash cold yet orderly mind, the macabre penances to which the night haunts have subjected are but justice, for there is not a single motive of mercy within his being. To the god of death, mortals that attempt to escape fate or thwart his design deserve the very harshest of dooms. Over the centuries, Nagash has invented many different curses to punish deserving souls that enter the underworlds. Some of the powerful hexes linger in purgatory, lurking in the underworlds like spiders, waiting for similar marked souls so that they might latch onto them as well. It then goes on to talk about an interesting comparison the Night Once has, and this one is with a plant, but bear with me because it actually makes a bit of sense. The Thorny Bruer. Thorny Bruer is a plant commonly associated with undead, and with the Night Haunts in particular. Its barbs represent the spirit's eternal pain and the cruelty of their existence, whilst the grave rose that sometimes appear on its stems further denotes death, tragedy and bleakness. The vine's creepers endlessly curl into knots, allegorical of the inescapable plight of these renovant spirits and the hopelessness of their fate. For although the necromantic forces holding night haunts together can be broken by sorcery or violence driven by significant willpower, over time their shattered essence reforms in the underworld of Shaish and they return to their morbid unlife. There are few weapons or spells in the mortal realms powerful enough to destroy a night haunt once and for all. So in that chapter of the Battle Tome we learned what it is truly meant to be on death. I know that sounds quite um, self-explanatory, but it's nice to um, have that put in there, especially how um, until in recent times before, you know, the Legions and the Gash Battle Tome came out, we there wasn't really much lore out there for death. There was a little bit, but... So in this chapter we learned what it's like to be um, part of the undeath in Age of Sigma and what undeath truly means and i know that does sound quite self-explanatory but because until like recent times since the legions of the gash battle time came out there was not really any law out there for um death as a grand alliance i mean i try to do my best in when i first started this channel and um i was trying to i think i came up with you know like 10 20 minute sort of law videos slash like fraction videos of like things like dead walkers for example which had barely any law but I had to basically scour the internet to try and find everything there was to them within warhammer um to try and make a video out of it however with um where we are now with death um we've got the obviously the legions of the gash battle tome like i mentioned but also with this nighthorn battle tome um that was just one chapter i read i appreciate this is quite a short video but um it was just one chapter just explaining what undeath means and in specific terms for the night horns but then again not just specifically for the night horns because it also did mention um what it's like am emanating the um skeletons and the zombies of age of sigma and um basically just telling you you know the three different ways um these undead creatures can be um created you know how um you had the like reanimating corpses you also had the way of, uh, you know, the infectious bites of zombies, which um, we all know about. You know, um, I've been watching a lot of The Walking Dead recently as well, and I've been getting into that. And, uh, yep, so that's nice to obviously have that classic zombie element in it. And then the third way of, like, um, really dark necromantic sorcery, as um, which in turn creates um, these night haunt creatures, is um, really just shows you the level and the scale of... Um, how the undead are created really it's not just like um one way fits all there is much more to it than you would originally think um and then what i would originally think as well so yeah that was um uh, that was interesting and that like i said that was just like one chapter and um you can learn a lot from it so like i say this is just going to be quite a short video but like i say just exploring one chapter i don't want to do um loads of lore in one big video just because i think that will be a bit too overpowering um in the sense of um you might not want to listen to a i don't know an hours long lore video with all the night haunt lore in it um i could be wrong if you would rather me just make a um like a couple 
long law videos for the night haunt let me know and i'll look into doing that rather than these um shorter ones but i think shorter ones are quite nice um for the moment anyway because um if you've only got you know like five ten minutes to listen it's something you can quickly put on but um yeah let me know if you like the longer ones though because i appreciate some of you guys do do um like painting a hobby when you do this and it can be quite annoying i don't know to click on the next video continuously but i will be putting these uh night one videos into a playlist so they should be able to just uh play from the first one to the last one i imagine i imagine that's how um youtube playlist works i'm not an expert but anyway um from apart from that ramble aside if there is any um videos you'd like me to make be it lore videos tactic videos or um, like more paint tutorials or anything like that um, please let me know in the comments and if you did enjoy this video please like subscribe and comment down below as that does really help me make as many videos as I can and as always guys thank you very much for watching this if you are listening to this on the day of it being uploaded have a very good weekend and I will see you in the next video and remember Nagash is all and all is one in Nagash